The way we consume and share news today, it is largely rooted in social media outlets, a reason why it's crucial to look at what's being discussed online. From the hottest issues to transfer our daily social media minute, we're joined by Yerika. Good morning. Good morning. A lot of grounds to cover, like FUBO mm-hmm. and toothpick sized snacks. Hmm. I know. Because hmm. I saw the video and I thought it was a joke. It's not. We'll get to it in just a moment. But first about the furry beloved friend, Fubao. Uh, she is expected to return to China in early April. That's set in stone. That's right. So the news was shared by Everland uh, yesterday, in fact, through its official and official social media channels that the date for the beloved giant panda, Fu Bao, has been determined. Uh, as you all know, Fu Bao, this beloved giant panda, was born and raised at Everland here in South Korea. And uh, she is turning four years old this year. Okay. So exactly when is she leaving? And where exactly will she be located to? And what does this mean for... Well, her Korean fans who just want to get a last glimpse of Fubao before she leaves. Fans is right. I mean, you know, she's a superstar in her own right. Um, Well, uh, let me give you some details, actually. So uh, she is slated to return to China in early April. The exact date I couldn't find, but we do know that it's sometime in early April. Uh, She's going to be relocated to the Giant Panda Conservation and Research Center in Sichuan province in China. Um, So under international regulations on wild animals, uh, Everland plans to manage Fubao in a separate area within Panda World for about a month before her departure. And what that means is Fubao is going to be on public display only until early March. Mm. Um, Also, as part of uh, the preparations for her move, uh, Everland is going to start limiting viewing hours uh, to the afternoon starting this week. Mm. Um, so uh, Everland uh, said that once the flight details for Fubao are finalized, mm. it's going to announce the detailed schedule for her departure. Mm. And uh, the amusement park also added that it's preparing some special programs for visitors, her fans, before her departure as well. Uh, one of our listeners, Aaron, asks, has China given an explanation as to why they are taking all their pandas back? Well, let's provide some background on panda diplomacy. Fubao was born in July 20th of 2020. She's the offspring of Li Bao and Ai Bao, two giant pandas that were sent to South Korea by mm-hmm. Chinese President Xi Jinping in March uh, in 2016 as a symbol of friendship between the two countries. And they were always... Well, meant to be part of diplomacy, which means if they had offsprings, they were always meant to go back to the conservatory. That's right. Um, And uh, during her time at Everland, she got so much love uh, (laughs) and adoration from the public. Uh, She's a social media star in her own right. I mean, you go to YouTube and search for FUBA videos posted by Everland. I mean, she has... uh, hundreds and thousands of views, some (laughs) millions, in fact. Um, Now, under the Convention of the Conservation of Endangered Species, pandas sent abroad by China are required to return before they turn four years old. If you remember, I mentioned a little earlier that uh, Fu Bao, in fact, turns four this year. Uh, And Everland has been in discussions about Fu Bao's return with the China Wildlife Conservation Association and the Panda Conservation Center since July of last year when she was three years old. All right, Erin, I hope uh, that answers your question. Uh, Because I really have to get to this, let's. Uh, This is the trend, apparently, (laughs) and we're going to stream videos and images of it because unless you see it, you won't believe us. Uh, Deep fried toothpicks. That's the trending (laughs) snack. Oh, boy. (laughs) Seriously. Uh, Weird snacks doesn't quite cut it, does it? Because I'm not Uh, quite sure if this is food. 
I know exactly. So, okay, here's a, a really unusual trend that has been gaining traction online here in South Korea, particularly among the younger groups. Uh, the trend is known as starch toothpick fries, uh, which involves frying and consuming uh, these toothpicks made of cornstarch. Now, these toothpaste, if you live in Korea, you've seen them. They're ubiquitous mm. and local. restaurants mm. uh, they're usually sitting at the counter next to the cashier and um, they're green mm. right mm -hmm. uh, they're typically green they're a little bit opaque mm. and uh, you know they're, they're they're meant to be used for dental hygiene to pick your tooth with mm. but now they're being deep fried and uh, transformed into these crispy snacks And this trend is, for obvious reasons, raising a lot of eyebrows and uh, concerns among parents and health experts. So confused, because I can't imagine it tasting good. I who wonder Who started this in the first place? I want to ask that question. Like, who decided, let's just deep fry everything and see if this works? I mean, the joke uh, is you can deep fry a shoe and it would taste good, right? That's like a Korean saying, but... none of us do it so why toothpicks uh, social media <laughs> platforms including youtube and instagram really don't help when these kind of trends gain start right. to gain traction it's been flooded with videos showing this rather odd culinary experiment uh, it, it does yeah, kind so of look I've like food video, after it's deep fried so i've seen these videos myself so content creators they're 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 frying these green starch toothpicks until they, they sort of puff up in the yeah, oil yeah And then they become crispy, you know, and uh, they, they serve these fried toothpicks. I can't even believe I'm saying it. <laughs> Deep fried toothpicks with a bunch of sauces ranging from melted uh, cheddar cheese to spicy chicken sauce and, you know, ramen soup mix. And some are even going a step further by boiling these uh, toothpicks and sort of trying to turn them into noodles. Mm. Um, anyways, uh, there are critics, but there are also proponents as well, as are trends on social media. So proponents of this trend say that the toothpicks are primarily composed of cornstarch. I think more than 90% mm. uh, composed of cornstarch and food grade dyes. Uh, so they're saying it's... You know, in, in the end, at the end of the day, they're safe to eat. However, this has not eased the growing concern among parents. Because just look at what that sounds like. We're deep frying yeah. toothpicks and putting cheddar cheese on it. Uh. I I, yeah. So many questions, but of course, so we want to just go back and see how it started trending. Comedian Hong yoon brought this trend to the limelight last January, particularly. She even shared her own tasting experience in a YouTube video, so people also got curious, probably. Yeah. Now, the big question, how do, how do experts, <laughs> health experts, feel about this trend? Deep frying toothpicks? Well, unsurprisingly, uh, they're warning people against... <laughs> It. You know, the Ministry of Food and Drug Safety has made it clear that these toothpicks are not designed for human consumption. Mm. And uh, the products often come with warning labels as well uh, that explicitly advise consumers against eating them. Uh, an official from the ministry stated that uh, it has not conducted any investigations related to this matter. As toothpicks are not intended for food purposes, we strongly advise against frying or consuming them. Now, as this weird trend continues to spread in the social media sphere, it's sort of a stark reminder of the bizarre food fads that are surfacing on the internet uh, and on social media, mm. particularly. And the critical need for caution and scrutiny when it comes to unconventional eating habits, especially those involving non-food items. I mean, young people these days are trying all kinds of crazy TikTok food hacks, right? Yeah. And uh, it's not safe at the end of the day. Um, don't believe everything you see online. And if it doesn't look like food, yeah. <sighs> but this is just stating the obvious and we're not really part of the TikTok crowd, are we? So it, who am I speaking to? I feel like all our listeners will be like, yeah, I'm not going to defry toothpicks. How do I get this message to those who are in the TikTok universe? Right, right. <laughs> should, mm. I, should I be on TikTok? No. Yes, no. Lena, go on TikTok. No, I'm good. I, I can already feel the stress level just like creeping up behind <laughs> me and just being the old grandma on tiktok being like everybody oh this is yeah 
yeah. yeah our producer is like <laughs> she'll be the one providing tansori that's like all all of the uh, I'll join you gladly <laughs> yes yes I'll be the one picking out all the wrongdoings okay so let's move on to our final <laughs> buzzword of the day Reese Witherspoon facing a little bit of backlash after her decision to create a rather unique recipe with snow and it just sounds fun but yeah. i don't know give access to everybody to give their two cents and someone will tear it apart you know speaking of weird snacks <laughs> this is a weird snack to some people out there okay um what happened was uh with reese witherspoon she posted a tiktok video on friday that shared uh, a recipe for a snow inspired uh, creation that she called a snow salt chococino <laughs> after she posted the video she received a bunch of questions from people about whether or not freshly fallen snow was okay to consume ah. uh, one commenter told her that she could get seriously sick from eating snow and then what she did was she posted three uh videos consecutively defending her choice to eat snow defending her choice of snack and she has basically hit back against the claim that snow is dirty i'm still stuck on snow salt chococino but anyway <laughs> she's obviously not apologizing for her wintry dessert creation that clearly got the internet buzzing and i don't know when you ask me why why should she you know, uh, exactly. I, I think that's the thing with social media and internet these days. It's just giving out so much information and we're consuming all that information. Yeah. And it's making us too smart for no good. Mm -hmm. And I think some people should relax a little and have a little fun, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, who hasn't eaten snow growing up, you know, if there is snow where you are? But uh, anyways, Reese Witherspoon agrees with me because she says, you know, we went and took snow from the backyard and we microwaved the snow and it's clear. Is this bad? Am I not supposed to eat snow? Mm. And, you know, she said she grew up not drinking filtered water, that she actually put her mouth on the tap mm. as a kid. And, uh, I, you know, she 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 was right when she said, you know, are you supposed to filter the snow before I eat it? <laughs> I feel I like the tooth, I don't know how to do that. The toothpick fryers out there are probably thinking, oh, that's where you draw the line. Snow is OK, but toothpick uh, is not. We can have this conversation on and on again. But I right. guess what disheartens me more is this idea to sort of talk down to people, say you're wrong. This is unhealthy. That's mm -hmm. probably not a decent conversation if we want to cancel everything. I'm not quite sure if we had any contents out there, but I do draw the line at toothpicks. I really do. Yeah, yeah. same here. I, the <laughs> land is like, I mean, the line is so clear. I couldn't be more precise. You know, for me, the good news is that, you know, not everybody was disapproving of her deciding okay. to eat snow, and they shared their own experiences of making snowy snacks. You know, one user wrote, I, I always ate snow with sugar and vanilla when I was a kid, always. Mm. And another person said, I've been eating snow ice cream for more than 60 years, and I'm fine. So... <laughs> I always go back to, I think it was a woman who, who was in her, you know, hundred something. She's very old. And she said uh -huh. her diet relied very much on Dr. Pepper. So a, a fizzy drink for her entire life. That's very sugary. And she said it had nothing to do with that. So to each their own is probably right. So don't be so condescending to snow. But again... But stick to foods that have been approved by the FDA. Ah, how about that? Yes, yep. yes. Are you smarter <laughs> than the FDA? <laughs> okay, thanks, Erica. That was so much fun. I'll see Pleasure. you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.